a rich hotel uh, in New York because she was given my phone number by Marcel Anoun. I'd worked with Marcel Anoun from 67. Actually, he's one of the first person having made film I met after finishing film school in Paris. Chantal phoned in 71, and she said, I'm a friend of Marcel, can I come and see you? And we kind of befriended each other, and I was touched by how young she was, really. She was very young. She was 21, basically. And I was older. It's not then, you know, she was not my little sister, really, but I felt protective of her. But I was also full of energy because I love living in New York and I had time to go and see experimental work. So I think I made her discover certain things. And definitely Michael Snow, uh, who uh, premiere his film La Région Centrale, which is a film which is shot in French Canada, very up north in a landscape which has absolutely no man-made uh, trace of any kind. There's a rock very close to where the camera is set, and it's behind that rock then the film crew, which was Michael and a camera person, <laughs> were hidden and controlling the camera by remote control and pushing buttons, basically. The film is actually hypnotic because the camera is constantly moving very, very slowly, looking at the sky, looking at the ground, and uh, again looking at, I mean, uh, the, the camera pivot on all the, the point of a sphere, basically. So you, you, you lose the sense of orientation because there is no still, except to retread the film, there is a break, which is a still frame of a cross, using a lab to move from one wall to the other, if you want. So suddenly, you were used to that spinning, and suddenly you have that cross, which is still, and it's, it's, it's stunning, you know? It's kind of jolt you out of your seat, and you go on, and the, in the next shot, which again start to spin, you could start to something which is similar to what you saw before, or start to something which is night, and before it was day, or whatever. There could be break also. But there was no really narrative uh, uh, thread of any kind. And I think that's what was so uh, interesting for me. And that's what's also so interesting for Chantal. And the fact that I was a camera person was, I think, the reason, outside of the fact we, 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 we had a good relationship to start. But I think she felt fascinated by the fact I knew how to use cameras. But I had no movie camera in my future when we met in October. But in January, that came about because I was recommended for shooting the film of Yvonne Rayner, Lives of Performer. And Yvonne was a close friend of Bob Rauschenberg, and he had a 16 camera. So there was a free camera, I knew to use it, and we immediately uh, connected around Ernie to find a person who could do what she wanted to do because she, she wanted to make film. But, you know, in, in her idea of making film, she had to have a camera person, and she was thinking the film. In my idea of film, I, I was a jack of all trades. I learned camera because image interested me more than anything else. So I think that was really the bond. But there was another bond. We were both women, both... Uh, she spoke better English than I was at the time we met. So, uh, but we were definitely not really immigrant, but, you know, we were isolated in the city, yeah. What happened between January 72 and uh, June 72 is very important because uh, I shot two little films for Chantal, Hotel Montreux and La Chambre. I say, let's do a film like uh, a Michael Snow film, which will be a continuous uh, 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 magazine load, which is 11 minutes in 16. And uh, we thought we should do it in color, so we did it, I think, in Kodachrome. Kodachrome has a very good color, and uh, we wanted to make sure we had enough light. And, uh, my recollection was Chantal was leaving, uh, I lived in that apartment. We went to examine the light and, uh, and we got the camera and actually uh, the day was set uh, because it was a very sunny day and between 10.30 and 11, the light was perfect. So we had to be ready at 10.30. Chantal improvised what she did uh, in, the, in the camera move. And uh, I, I did not direct her at all. I mean, uh, you know, I just told her, we discussed, uh, do we start by the window? I had put reflector, uh, so you did not see those mirrors, but uh, every, there was no other light than the daylight coming from the window. 
but Chantal could see where I was because I had to walk around the camera so she could see when she was taken by my 16 camera. And probably we had re rehearsed the, the, you know, I had told her how she would be framed on the bed. You know, she had contributed to the framing for sure. Yeah, uh, Chantal always did. That was very important. The image is very important for Chantal. It was very important in the 70s. I think it's less now, but it was at the time. So I think it's improvised in a way. I don't think there was big aim behind the movie. It just happened and the movie has a lot of charm because I think Chantal is also... Uh, 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 in a way, a charismatic performer. What is important to know is the fact Chantal lived in Hotel Montreux for several weeks. And it's by living there that she got the idea of doing the film. So she told me, uh, come over and let's make some photographs or something like that. Or she told me she had the intention to make the film. So it's a day in the life of that hotel. So we are going to be there in one day and see the, the, the transformation or what happened at night and what happened during the day. So he ended up to be only starting at five in the afternoon when there's still light entering the lobby and finishing on the roof. I think the idea to finish on the roof came for me because we went to the roof and I think there was that beautiful, uh, uh, you know, sense of space uh, being opened up by uh, having, uh, by being contained inside the hotel for uh, the totality of the film, except the last 10 minutes, which, or five minutes, the last shot, basically, where you are, uh, you are seeing the city. The idea of uh, the elevator door, uh, the idea of the door left ajar was totally what Chantal has seen. She has seen people leaving the door ajar to see people passing because they have nothing to do. I think what was very important is the fact that you could improvise with the camera if you wanted to, if you had the right camera person, obviously. Uh, and you could also start to do something which uh, you did not know will end. So you, there was no script, if you want. Mostly, we were involved in actually observing, and that, that's what happened there. Chantal was never really grounded the way I was. She was mostly in New York between 71, October, November, and 73 when she started to go back. But she had gone back at least four or five times. And also, she was really interested in making narrative film. Uh, and I think she um, she guessed properly that she, there was a support system for uh, independent production in uh, in Belgium and also in in France. That's the reason she moved to Paris, actually. Uh, who could who could help her produce uh, the film she wanted to make? And uh, Jean Dillman was the first. In the case of Jeanne Dillman, the, the script was a short story. It was written as a descriptive of the action of Jeanne, which is what the film is about. It's about women doing things. The script for her is where she's like Bresson, totally. Uh, uh, she's totally conceptualizing how the film is going to sh be shot at the writing phase. Definitely Chantal knew then it will not, the gesture will not be cut in pieces. But nobody had realized then to do certain things takes a lot of time because those gestures have never been filmed before. That's it, there was no anticipation of the actual duration. The, the principle of, you know, having an action from one camera position and not cutting to another later of the same action, that was established in the writing. Chantal every, conceptualized her film in the writing process. I knew the way it would be framed because it would be framed like Hotel Montreux anyway, or it would be framed like La Chambre. There was no debate in my mind between me and Chantal, or no debate in Chantal's mind about how she will film it. She knew beforehand. Yeah. 
I'm sure I knew at the time that Godard say framing is a moral act. And in a way, what you frame is, I was convinced, and what you frame in a film is actually communicating what the essence of the film is going to be about. So that there was no... You know, I think it's part of the cinema I was interested in. It's part and uh, the cinema which we all felt was uh, the kind of film we wanted to make or Chantal wanted to make. So uh, that sense then the decision of the framing is actually uh, uh, is actually important. It's the essence of what film is about. When the client leaves, and uh, uh, Jeanne come uh, uh, closer to bring the coat. Actually, what you see is the, also the end where the money is going to be put. So basically, it's not the face of Jeanne which is relevant. For me, it's totally good storytelling. You evacuate what is not essential and you privilege what is essential, which is the gesture. The gesture is really what is important. What is interesting is there is no reverse shot because there is no need for a reverse shot. Huh? She's a woman alone in her apartment. The time there is a, a, a son, there is on occasion a shot of him listening at an angle, the shot of her talking to him at an angle. So it's not really a reverse shot, but you have him talking or listening, and on occasion, actually, when he's eating or not eating and reading his book, it's actually not a wrong dialogue. A wrong dialogue between, which is so, uh, there's only two moments where there is really a conversation with the son, two evenings. They both are seen in the same shot, so you see him listening and her talking. Uh, around the dinner table, there is moment where there is one and the other, but otherwise there is no there is no action. So obviously, there is no reason to have reverse shot in that film. So when people say no reverse shot, that means they have not comprehend what the film is about. Robert Frank told me you are the person who film people like they are giant. And I told him, that's so interesting you say that. And I say, you know, it's because I'm not that tall and I keep the camera low and often I keep the camera lower than I am. So I have to squat to actually be at the height of the camera. So if somebody is standing, I put the camera at the, at the waist or a little bit above the waist, but definitely not here if you want. It's a different style of framing because I think I want to actually, uh, uh, why John Wayne is John Wayne is because he's very tall and the camera is lower. You know, it's John Ford who told me that basically in the way he shoots John Wayne. So why not give uh, to, to a woman's film the same kind of, uh, of imposed uh, uh, silhouette, if you want, of a camera placement, which is lower. So I think for me that's 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 important. But the the camera position was actually decided by Chantal. Of course, I could say that could be better to be this way, this way, and I was showing her. If she accepted we were doing it my way. But uh, you know, for Chantal, her reason was the fact I think she she also felt the same way. We wanted to she wanted to actually make the look on the body to be more majestic. In terms of the practicality of the apartment, is the size of the kitchen, which was really uh, small, like most kitchen, uh, which defined then there was only two access, basically. There was no other choice. And do a pan uh, with a wide angle from here to there, when you are very close to the back wall, is really ugly. So it makes no sense to do it, you know. Why? To see the movement, she can go off screen and come back. It gives their movement much more dynamism to do that. If you do instant and exit, you have a better sense of movement for the actor than if we follow. Steady cam has actually killed cinema, you could argue. It's very funny because in this video then uh, uh, Sami did, there is a moment where Sami said, but you lose her, you lose her. And I said, oh, that's fine. In the background, nobody noticed me talking, but I know my voice. So he said, oh, but that's fine. Uh, uh, on the contrary, it's much better. <laughs> that's what I say.
<laughs> it was about her coming very close to the camera, you know, uh, opening the, the, the cupboard to pick up uh, a new, a new uh, milk or a new, new something. I mean, uh, a cooking ins uh, instrument or a stencil or whatever. And it was perfect, you know. It's kind of a, it kind of a, you want to see her when she's sitting at the kitchen table. She's kind of lost, and there you want to see her because she's lost. Actually, she's even more lost in long shot. Doing a close-up will be pathetic. Will be horrible. You know, nobody, if, if Chantal asked me to do a close-up, I would say, come on, Chantal, no, you cannot do a close-up, come on. <laughs> One thing which was a difficulty in the lighting of the film uh, was then the apartment chosen, which was chosen before I arrived, was not very high ceiling. So when Delphine was standing up, uh, uh, I had a clearance which was something like two, two and a half feet, which is not much room to put light on top of her. Uh, so I had to use light which was very diffuse and were uh, photo flood, which I use at 3200 degree K, obviously, because we were shooting tungsten. And a lot of the light falling on her were was actually very diffuse, which was going to the fact she was 42 years old and I wanted to have a diffuse look in the light, but not using a diffuser on the camera, obviously. Uh, so uh, the softness had to do with also the way I lit the material. It's lucky I arrived so early because uh, the first week I saw that clearance and I say, I'm going to have this type of light, and I thought about it, and, uh, and I passed all the electricity on the ceiling. So we did not have to step on cord, on electrical cord, because, you know, shooting in an apartment, which is not that big, uh, created all kinds of problems. So uh, you have to make all the technique invisible, you need to have the room of the film cameras, even, uh, you know, in the kitchen, we, we work without the blim because it took too much room and, uh, and we had to use a wide angle, which Delphine was a bit worried about and so on and so on. So uh, 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 I, I kind of adjusted prior to make sure I had no problem in the light and I had all my electrical uh, on top so I could modify very quickly the light. Delphine, I was really uh, taken by her because uh, that's the first time I realized that in something which is physical acting, because it's gesture, you know, she had the intelligence of, uh, of modifying her, her rhythm and her speed. And she was very interested in silent cinema. And I think that's silent film acting, basically. The fact that uh, you, it's totally, if you observe Charlie Chaplin, you know, the gestures are not done mechanically uh, 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 in a kind of naturalistic uh, uh, rhythm. Uh, there is an interpretation of how the gesture is done. You do something very quickly and you slow down, you know, you modified. Uh, the way she picked up the, 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 the scotch tape after she has wrapped the coat each time, I think, it's a miracle, you know. For me, it was a miracle because suddenly she's somebody who was all the time in the world and suddenly there's an urgency, you know, and the urgency has to do with her son. I mean, I thought that was great acting. So I was totally convinced that actor are uh, a way to do film, you know, which I was not convinced before. <laughs> I mean, look at Delphine being an actress, yeah. Delphine really believed in the project like you cannot think. I mean, she was totally committed to it and, uh, and felt that the film was important. And I think it was, it, it's, it's amazing, you know, uh, of uh, thinking then, you know, in front of her, she had a director which was 25 years old and had done very little, basically. We were all unknown to her, if you want. Th that element of trust, I'm, I'm, I still, uh, I still feel touched by it, you know. And in many ways, I feel Delphine believed in the project because he was really uh, focusing on the fact that the film is about one woman and nothing else. Delphine was a feminist in 75, but 
calling myself a feminist was hard because I felt it was pigeonholing you. You know, I, I never liked the idea of film festival only for women film, you know. I always, and, and, and I felt that was an insult in a way. And I think uh, that movement of, you know, finding a, a, a place where you can exist because you are a woman, because in the world at large you are not accepted as a woman in the profession you have decided, which for me was cinematography, was not my decision. I did not want to be just a woman cinematographer. I wanted to be a cinematographer, period. I think it's the same thing for Chantal, in a way. The idea that she will be... Uh, only a woman film director and nothing else was not, I think, the way she defined herself. But telling stories which have not been told, which are stories which have not been told because the people deciding the story to be told are men and were men traditionally, that definitely I felt very strongly about. Chantal felt even more strongly. Jean Dillman is dedicated to that, dedicated to the idea. It's a subject which could not be invented by a man. I never saw the film. I saw one reel at the time, so I thought it was great. But I had no sense of the impact because I had not seen reel one, two, and three. There was uh, eight, nine reel or whatever. It's three hours, 15 minutes, you know, 17 minutes. So it's long. It was many reels. I discovered the film a year later when it was shown at the Museum of Modern Art. And there I say, my God, it's a masterpiece. You know, and I felt, I, I turned toward my friend, Annette Michelson, who knew Chantal, and, uh, and Annette, like me, was stunned, you know. She, she obviously knew we had shot the movie, she knew Delphine, she, she knew all the conditions, she probably even had read the Le Monde reaction to it in 75, you know. I knew then people thought it was a great film, but it's not the same thing than thinking you, <laughs> it's a great film. It, it, for me, it's a film which, uh, in a way, belongs to the ages, you know. I'm, I, I, I contribute to making the film, but I don't think it's a great film because of me. I think it's a great film because of the circumstances and obviously the combination of Chantal, uh, uh, Delphine, and, and I suppose myself also. But, you know, it, it's bigger than we thought it would be. I think for everybody it's bigger than we thought it would be, yeah.